Sasha Goodman. <laughs> She's amazing at basketball. We today we're gonna get deep inside of her story of basketball. So stay there. We back in less than ten. Say well your name. I, I I think I didn't. As uh, <laughs> Sasha Goodlet. Sasha Goodlet. Sasha Goodlet. Thank you so much to be here. It's amazing. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you for having me. You where are you from? Uh, from the states. I'm from a small town, Bolton, Mississippi. Bo <laughs> no, it's Boston. Bo Bolton. 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 Oh, but uh, you're here now in Barcelona. Have some time. What are you doing now here? Um, I'm just here visiting my dad, um, Adi Norris, and just out here having a mini vacation and training also. Oh, that's great. Where you came from before Barcelona? Um, I was playing in Turkey this past season. Wow, which city? Uh, Istanbul? No, I was in Istanbul last mm -hmm. season, but this season I was in um, Tarsus. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that uh, Turkey has a uh, basketball feminine they have a good, good there, right? Good. Um. Yes, Turkey is very competitive um, on every division. Uh -huh. they have their Super League, and then right under there is their Division One, and that was the division I've currently been playing in. That's amazing. The food is good too, right? <laughs> yes, their food is amazing. <laughs> have you been traveling Turkey around a little bit? Well, this was my sixth year in Turkey, so oh, <laughs> so you know a little bit better there. Yes, I've been all over Turkey, but um, it's a beautiful country, and every time I talk to people, I encourage them to go and visit because it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you coming from the states? We're gonna back uh, on the beginning, but first of all, you came from the states. Which uh, countries you have been play outside of in the states? Um, I saw the states. I started in China for a short oh. period, and then I went to South Korea, and I was there for three years, and then I've been in Turkey for the past six. <laughs> so, uh, Sasha is an amazing basketball player. She started in NBA, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, what is your team's NBA? Where, where have you played there? I was originally drafted in 2012 to the Indiana Fever. Wow. Um, and we were fortunate enough to win the championship that uh -huh. year in our rookie season. And I played there for two years, and then I played with the Chicago Sky for two years. But, oh, you have been playing Chicago. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> uh, you have been, you you did college, right? You come, mm -hmm. which, which college, where was that? Um, I went to the Georgia Institute of Technology, which is for short Georgia Tech in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Have you been thinking about stop basketball and back to studs or not? Um, no, yeah, it's the kind of. I got my master's in history uh, about two years ago because I know I want to eventually maybe become a professor and teach mm -hmm. history. Uh, but currently, I'm on track to finish my career strong. And well, you still have so long time. Uh, probably about three, three to five more years, and then I'll start trying to transition into maybe becoming an international teacher. That's amazing. You you don't stay with basketball. Um, basketball has been an amazing experience. I've been playing for over 20 years now. Wow. Which is crazy to think about. And I've been blessed to play this sport at the highest level and be successful at some of the highest levels. But for me, I love kids. I love teenagers. And I want to make an impact not just with athletes, but with children everywhere. That's awesome. Well, you talking about you have been 20 years in basketball already, but you basically born inside <laughs> of the basketball, right? Your dad was amazing, a legend basketball player. How you feel about uh, having such a day with, you know, professional play like that? Did you feel, you know, some like a, how say that in English? <laughs> Like uh, when somebody says you must to be oh, basketball, you know, definitely no. not. I started playing pressure. <laughs> Pre you feel yeah, no, I started playing soccer Oh. Um, when I was little and I loved soccer. I thought that I was going to become a professional soccer player. Uh -huh. I had my life all mapped out until I turned 13 and I was asked to play basketball. Uh huh. And I was just like, OK, why not? In my head, I was only going to play for a year or two, and then I was going to go back to soccer to finish and then go to but college. But you're very tall. How, how tall you are you? Uh, I'm about 6'5". 
six four. This is not your uh, uh, is it two oh. meters like a two two meters? Oh no! <laughs> I exaggerated. <laughs> like, um, I think about one ninety three, one ninety two. Oh, but it's still is uh, yes. but uh, but for football it's okay. Oh, uh, I was a goalie. Oh, so ah, okay. So it's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it was like, oh, she's long, she's tall, she's she can protect the goal. Uh -huh. Everyone was happy except for everyone that wanted me to play basketball. So I had to make a decision around when I was 13 or 14 about which oh, there was hard time to make the decision. It was because I told people all the time soccer was my first love and then basketball came along and just being under But it uh, seems uh, as your career that's mean then you have a talent because <laughs> you have been grown so much in the basketball. Oh, um that I can attest it was not you're a sport person you could we could uh, uh -huh. like that. I was terrible at basketball <laughs> when I first started it was it was very bad but um I was I got an amazing coach and I was taught every day just to be a little bit better than myself the mm -hmm. previous day and I just listened to everything to everything everyone was saying and that's kind of how I learned the sport and did your dad teach you something Oh, he taught me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I taught everyone, like, he taught me how to think basketball, and that's probably one of the most important things. If you, you have learned have from, uh-huh. Is you have to know how to think. And I've it's been, not just play and uh, run, right? It's oh, not, you no, need it's, must it's, read it's the mental. game. It's mm -hmm. just about read. It's like, like he always told me when I was younger, it's about, it's like chess. It's mm -hmm. moves and counter moves. And... It's just learning how to adjust and how to push through adversity and how to just play hard at the end of the day. And that was one of the many lessons he taught me throughout my career. That's amazing. Oh, it's so cute. Uh, talking about Lynn, you, you, there was a big part of beautiful image for you, right? You have everything from him. There's another player than um, you still, uh, you have as, uh, you know, as example? Um, Not really. There are a lot of players I admire, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of players I've been blessed to play with and against. I've played against Sylvia Faust, Tanika Ketchins, Maya Moore, some of the greatest players mm -hmm. that will, that have been or will be in the Hall of Fame at some point. And I've learned a lot of lessons from them, but I would have never been put in that position had I not learned all the lessons I learned mm -hmm. earlier on from my dad. So I tell him all the time, like, I'm, I am in my career because of you. And whenever I talk to people, I let them know, like, this is where I learned basketball from. And this is where I learned how to develop a love for this sport. That's amazing. Well, I have uh, sometimes here uh, basketball players, men, and it's kind of different play, uh, game, right? Uh, for you, what is the difference uh, between men's and basketball girls? Um, I feel like women have to think the game more. Like men, they're very athletic, and there are some things that come naturally, like just out of just natural athletic ability. And with women, sometimes we have to figure out and think a little bit harder how to make something happen like a guy can just jump up and dunk and have a great finish with women not a lot of us are jumping off of two feet and dunking so we have to get creative with how do we protect the ball how do we lay it up how do we play defense and all these other things um so that's the main i feel like the main difference is that women have to think the game a little bit more than men You think the woman is could be better than men or not? It's it's different, right? It's this different. Um, I don't like to compare when it comes mm -hmm. to who's better than others because I feel like there's a beauty in this sport where we can appreciate everyone's talents. Oh, But that's amazing. It's very possible, like to see a girl go up against a guy and her win easily because she's just better and she's just more talented. But the reverse is also true. You can take a really good woman athlete and put her against a guy of the same caliber and he just dominate just out of pure strength and height and athletic ability. We are in this new generation, I say, no, because uh, everything from the the uh, last 10 years is completely different from now, mm -hmm. especially for women. And I, I just talking about basketball, but in everything, women have to be so much powerful, important, you know, uh, get it bigger, get it better in everything. You think, you think that basketball 
for example, you're talking about the quality, but the money too doesn't go is the same for men as for women. It's not. I mean, the men's game has been developing revenue at a large scale for mm -hmm. a longer period. Women, we're getting there and we're fighting for it. And we have a lot of great men counterparts that are acknowledging it. They're like, yes, they deserve to be paid more. Equality, right? Uh -huh, and equality, but... Um, equality. I'm not <laughs> sure it'll ever get to where where the men is mm -hmm. like equally as in pay. But I feel like we're making great strides towards it. And I feel like a lot more people are paying attention to women, um, women's sports and women basketball in particular. Mm -hmm. And that will only grow as more people have daughters and they get passionate for the sport and more women get involved in basketball. Um, then you because they want to see for their daughters too the right. same things, right? Mm -hmm. It's like not just my for my son, but for my daughters too. Right, and that's usually how it happens. It takes them having a girl that's extremely talented for them to be like, hey, these girls can play. Like we need to respect their game and then they'll start advocating for us. And I feel like as that happens, everything will kind of fall into place and we will we will find our footing and find our our solidify our stance in women's sports and basketball women's basketball will become its own instead of being compared so much to men mm -hmm. because i feel like there's a beauty in both there's a beautiful thing about watching men's basketball and it's exciting to watch the dunks and the deep threes and everything but there's also a beauty in watching women's basketball also and a lot more fans are starting to see that and a lot more people are starting to come out and be more vocal about it that's awesome well talk about an equal uh, we woman brings life <laughs> you have some experience or do you have kids like uh when's the time for the play make a, this a little stop in life have the kids and if it's possible to back how is how it's working basketball for women it's possible um you have to have a great support system and it's all about timing um there have been plenty of professional players that will get pregnant in the fall because they play in the WNBA in the summers and they'll bounce back really quick and then there's some that it takes them a little bit longer but they work their way back yes because we are actually carrying children <laughs> we can't play while we're um pregnant but we find a way um for me to, i want to wait to get his casual right <laughs> yes like it's not like you're just gonna pop up and be like oh i'm gonna get pregnant in the middle of the season <laughs> and you'll be able to finish it's more so of okay this is a timeline let me express this to my agent my agent's gonna talk to the team okay, so it's cool. much more organized it yes, is it's very organized and the team will discuss and negotiate and they'll be like okay we support you go ahead have your family and then once you're ready to get back in the gym we'll get you back in shape this is very interesting because many women we are talking about that how you guys can you know uh, put in together the the kids and the the family uh, basketball together plus you have kids and you need to start travel again you know i mean i've seen some amazing women do it tina thompson is probably one of the best examples of uh -huh. a single mom who raised her son and traveled and played basketball. Um, I met Tina when she was in South Korea and her son Dylan, he was, I think maybe 10 or a little bit younger than that. And she did a great job. Like he was homeschooled of course, but he's very smart and he has a very bright basketball career in front of him also. So it can be done. And then there are some that opt to retire once they're ready to start a family. And I can't say either way is the right way. It's just finding the way that works best for you. For me, I think once I decide to have a child, I think I will want to just kind of cool down and focus all up, put all my energy towards that. So I probably will wait and then be finished once I do have a baby. But if, it, if the cards show that I have a great support system and I can come back and continue to play, I would probably extend my career it's all about what options i'm given that's amazing talk about uh, we know talk about the finish but <laughs> when you think it about that have you think about one city that you would like to leave yes um i used to joke barcelona with, <laughs> <laughs> I, I joke with my mom all the time because i'm like okay because she's just 
when are you gonna retire and come home? And I'm like, okay, I might retire, <laughs> but the come home part. Um, but no, I love Barcelona. It's not gonna happen. I love <laughs> Turkey. I love traveling. Mm -hmm. I would love to go and see different countries. And like I said, eventually I might teach internationally. And who knows what country that would take me to to stay. You like to discover still things. Yes, right? I love like I love just going and visiting new places and figuring out like how their culture is and how they operate and do things. Um, I'm a history major, so I love anything history related. And European history is gorgeous with the historical attractions, the museums, everything. Talking about Europe and states, let's back to basketball. How you feel the basketball from Europe to un states? Uh, how is the difference? How you feel? You you must to get in the uh, lane a little bit the mm -hmm. difference too, right? Um, I feel like basketball in Europe, the fans are so passionate and they're so supportive. Like they ride for their team. Like if this is Barca, then it's like okay. Barca's my team, nobody else. I don't care if you're having <laughs> a bad season, a great season. Like, this is who I'm rocking with. And even in Turkey, like, whatever city I've been in, the fans have been nothing but nice, supportive, loving, and they show up and they cheer hard. And Europe, that European culture, it's more like family, like with their fan bases. It's like, okay, we're good. We're all a family here. Welcome to our city. We invite you with open arms and in America it's getting there as like, you know, the attraction for women's sports is growing and as we get more attention through social media and all these other vices and it will get to there hopefully. But there's nothing like European fans. No, I, I was crazy. thinking it was different. Like I have been seeing games on YouTube, but TV was full a lot of people watching. Yeah, but I'm It's talking about like every game. Ah, okay. Like, yes, now the f like the arenas will be full in America mm -hmm. because it's the NBA championship. Uh huh. Or it's the playoffs. Ah, okay. But in Europe, it could just be a every game. game. Ah, okay. And people are showing up, and fans are being loud, no matter who they're playing against. They're mm -hmm. that supportive of their oh, team. Oh, okay. That's and awesome. And that's like that's the difference. But it's also like very. It's a it's a beautiful sight. Like I tell people all the time, if you can get to Europe to experience a game, a basketball game, a soccer game, it doesn't matter what sport it is. If you can come and see that environment, you will you will definitely appreciate well, it. Well, you you still like uh, football? Yes, <laughs> yes. We went to the football game um, this past weekend. Uh -huh. and I absolutely. Who won? It. Barca. <laughs> Barca. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> I don't know how they go in the, to uh, this season. I don't know. I. I like football, but it's not like uh, I don't see the points, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know how they go. So I hope Barca goes well. So you watching the Barca, mm -hmm. how many goals they did? Oh, they scored three. Oh, oh that was good game. Yes. Yeah, I love to game. see games like when they have, you know, some uh, action because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just like... You're just sitting on <laughs> it. Yes, I just appreciate football. Like, the passion, the sport, the running, the all of it, the feel. It's very physical it's to amazing, be. amazing, yes. It's very taxing on their bodies, but it's just an amazing, like, sight. I just love the game. Once you're in, uh, in Spain, Barcelona, what's your favorite food here? Oh, there have been so many. <laughs> do, you, do you like fish? I do. I love oh, fish. that's I good. Love seafood. I no, so uh, many Americans like fish, huh? Oh, I love calamari. It's oh, <laughs> um, I love octopus. Like any type of seafood, I will try. You're you're familiar with Spanish food? Um, paella. Uh, I've had paella. Uh -huh. Paella is amazing. You can never go wrong with paella. Um, and there are a couple other dishes. I really do not want to say the name of, so I won't try <laughs> and pronounce them. But I've just been trying different foods. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, there are a lot of foods I haven't tried this past weekend. I tried duck for the first time, mm. and it was really good. And um, The French people know how to cook uh, duck with yes. the sweet sauce. Yes, but um, I haven't. You didn't like it. Oh no, I love duck. Oh, okay. I, I loved it, but I was like, I was the Chinese are uh, doing a very good uh, duck. Yeah, I wasn't there long enough to find <laughs> You didn't I was try like that. Maybe like three months, and I was like, okay, I have to go. Oh. I didn't have the best experience in China, even though I'm so I feel sorry like about that. It happens. Every mm -hmm. That's one thing. Every professional 
that plays overseas, they have one season where it just it just doesn't work out. And it's sad to see. And you must to move on. It's a part of the business. Mm -hmm. And you must move on. You wish everyone the best. And you just go to the next. Well, what is your next now? Where are you going? Uh, currently, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll just you'll enjoy the summer mm -hmm. time and have fun? Yes, I'm just enjoying the time here spent with my family. And I'm just enjoying going to these places, going to the games and training and working out. I really recommend if you can go uh, to Costa Brava. It's a beautiful beach over there. Oh. It's amazing beach. So you stay here in Barcelona for uh, how long? Yeah, to the end of June. Oh, that's great. You still have a lot of time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy so much your visit here. Thank you so much to be here too. This, I appreciate your time. I'm sorry for my English. I'm oh, getting no. better, I promise. It was perfect. <laughs> it was fun. Thank you for having me. This was actually my first podcast, so it was a great Really? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. I did many, many, so <laughs> you're on the first one too. <laughs> Uh, the first one was with Dolores. It, she's oh. with you there, right? Yes. So there were there were ones that I needed like a couple times repeating, mm -hmm. repeating again, some stuff. That was amazing. But anyway, thank you so much to be here, guys. Thank you for watch. I see you in the next episode. Don't forget to follow us. Do you have some on uh, Instagram that you like I to do. people? I have an Instagram account. It's um, at Somalia45, and that's my account. I'm gonna put in the link here in the top or whatever <laughs> here. <laughs> you guys gonna see over there. Don't forget to follow her. And don't forget to support sports. Doesn't matter if it's kids, women's, men's, always sports is the best in life, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Bye.